You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Fast Break Edition podcast. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball. Today we're going to be looking back at the top 20 players across the NBA over the last two weeks, which does include the all-star break. Michael Bolton. Let's get to it. To it. All right, let's get to it indeed. Let's take a look at these top 20 players. Number one, I think it's been James Harden or Anthony Davis at number one pretty much all season in these two-week reviews. We finally got someone new on top, and that is Bradley Beal, the number one player over the last two weeks. Again, for nearly all of these players, it's just four games, maybe some threes or twos mixed in there. But 42 minutes a night for Bealo, 35 points, Three triples, four and a half rebounds, eight and a half assists, 1.3 steals, and almost a block on 53 and 98. So that 98% from the line is really what's bumped him up because it gives him a Z score in that category of over six because it's 11 attempts per game and he's missed one out of his last 45 attempts. Um, and that's what's really driving that value. And of course, as we talk about so often, free throw percentage and field goal percentage has an additional impact on the points category with field goal percentage also usually indirectly impacting impacting the three-pointers category. So they can be really influential in terms of looking at rankings because they have an influence on two, maybe three categories. And that's clearly the case here. Not only uh, is the, the value coming from his free throws and him making them or taking them and making them, but it's adding to his points category as well. I think Beal should be around that top 10 guy for most of this season, but this level uh, with that sort of a boost from free throws is not likely to continue. Number two, a player who many people would have hoped would have been here for most of this season, Russell Westbrook. Uh, 39 minutes a game, and in large part, the reason he's been down in the teens is has been percentages. But over the last four, 49% from the field on 27 attempts, that's a positive, and he's not hurting your free throws. 77% from the line on nine attempts. Now, that is normally the, the cutoff is about 78%. If you shoot over 78%, you're a plus. If you shoot under 78%, you're a, you're a negative in that category. And yeah, the more attempts you have, it multiplies how big that uh, that impact is. So Westbrook going from, say, 65 on nine attempts to 77 on nine attempts brings him to right in average in that area, and then all his other numbers can shine. 37 points. Actually, four threes a game on 37%. He's been an atrocious three-point shooter. 13 and a half rebounds, eight and a half assists, one and a half blocks from Westbrook, six blocks in his last four games, 1.3 steals. So really bringing those numbers up. But we know that, that yeah, there is some elevation there, the threes and the points, especially uh, everything else on the blocks are elevated, but it's really to do with those efficiency jumps that Westbrook's taken uh, over this last little period. And I'm not convinced at all that it's going to stick uh, that has caused him to jump up to number two. So a really different looking top of this list here. Number three, Yanni Antetokounmpo, uh, only 30 points per game, but 15 boards, eight assists, two blocks and a steal. And like Westbrook, with his free throws jumping up 78% on 10 attempts, that takes him from being that eighth guy or ninth guy or 12th guy or fifth guy up to number three because he's not providing a big negative. Now, I talk about the limitations of rankings all the time. And if you had Antetokounmpo, you were probably punting free throws anyway. So he was locked in as a number two or number number three guy for big chunks of this season. And that's what rankings fail to take into consideration is team build and the way you've built your squad uh, around that player, which of course is the same thing as me saying team, team build. But when those numbers come back up to close to average, then the ranking actually starts to reflect his true value. Number four is Steph Curry, averaging nine, uh, not 94 points, 29 points, a bit of dyslexia there, three triples, seven rebounds, five assists, and 1.8 steals on 46%. Hasn't missed a free throw either, 46% on his threes also. Just strong numbers from Steph. You'd expect him to hover at around this range. And unlike some of these guys above where you go, okay, well, Beal's not averaging 98% from the line. Westbrook's not averaging 1.5 blocks and four triples. Uh, Yanni, well, Yanni probably is averaging these numbers, maybe not 77% from the line. But you look at Steph and you go, well, that's all relatively realistic. I can see him being able to continue to do this you know, for the rest of the season. There's no reason why he can't continue on this similar sort of path. Number five has been the number one guy all season, James Harden. Uh, 34, six and six with five triples and 2.3 steals. Interestingly, no blocks in his last three games. He is 
Uh, he did also miss the last game with that neck injury. He's likely to return on Monday. Uh, 43 and 94. Also, his free throw attempts down, just six per game over the last three. He'll shoot back up there. Nothing to really worry about. A lot of people were panicking about this neck injury for Harden. Or should I trade him away? Uh, no. Um, obviously, he, he's going to be back now and miss one game. Number six. LeBron James. 41 minutes a game for James in the last three. 28, 10, and 11. 2.7 steals a block. He's really done his best to try and carry the Lakers, at least statistically. He didn't play well in the game against the Pelicans. But there's going to have to be a few of these big games from LeBron to really lift the Lakers into the playoffs. And he could be uh, an interesting top six guy for the rest of the season. He's barely been a first-round player this season. And in a lot of builds, he hasn't been. Uh, but I can see him being a top 10 guy uh, for stretches here down the, down the rest of the way. Number seven is Andre Drummond, averaging 23 and 17. And the free throws, which had been a real disappointment this season, back up to 66%. Now, that's still a big negative. But when you bump that up by 10 percentage points, plus his field goal percentage, which had struggled at 64%, has given him a real boost there. Plus, of course, the excellent uh, rebounds and points. And not to mention, he's averaging three and a half steals per game. So there's going to be a bit of a, a drag here. And if the field goal percentage regresses and those steal numbers come down, then a lot of Drummond's value will fade away. Paul George, who's been a, a top three, a top five guy most of the season, he is in at number eight, 43 minutes a game over the last four for Georgie, 33, 10, and seven with a steal. Uh, the reason he's down at eight instead of, say, three is he's averaging just that one steal per game when he's been a two-plus guy for most of this season, 45 and 92, so about solid percentages. He's pretty inconsistent with field goal percentage, so when you look at large sample size, the field goal percentage looks good, but he'll have stretches where he goes 55, and then he'll have stretches where he goes 39, and in the end, it balances out, but he can be quite inconsistent in that category. Number nine is Kevin Durant, um, 29 points per game, five rebounds, four assists, 0.3 steals, and three blocks. Helpful that he blocked, I think, seven shots in that game against the Kings to get those numbers up. Some of the other numbers are, aren't quite what we'd hope for Durant, and he clearly, we saw the his ability end again. If you're looking at him in a dynasty league, like you might be able to buy him as a top nine guy. And if he leaves next season, he goes back to being a top two player in fantasy. We saw that earlier this season when Steph was out, that his numbers were through the roof. And if he does go to another team this offseason, I think we'll just see more of that. And he'll go back to being either that number one or number two guy uh, pretty comfortably. And that is something to pay attention to. And while it might not seem like value getting a, a guy to go from nine to two, that is a huge jump as we talk about how uh, yeah, much those top guys can separate themselves. And Durant has a real chance to push himself back into that area. Rounding out the top 10 is Kyrie Irving. Only played two games. Uh, he missed those games, games before the break with a knee injury. 41 minutes, 30 points, three rebounds, seven and a half assists, a surprising 1.5 blocks to go with 1.5 steals. So that block number probably reduces, the minutes numbers reduces, the efficiency is actually down from where he was. So he's been around this range most of the season. Carl Anthony Towns is going to return to action today, Monday, from his concussion. He comes in at number 11, 24 and a half and nine and a half on 62 and 83. We love those percentages from Townsy. That's what really solidifies him as a first round sort of a player. And then number 12, a guy that's a little bit surprising to see here, but he's been excellent. Al Horford of the Boston Celtics, 20 and 10 with over two threes, over five assists, 1.8 steals on 50 and 88. Um, this is a potential yeah, real sell high opportunity. You're not getting this sort of value back for him pretty clearly, but I think there are a couple of things here that he is playing well, well above his head. The scoring, even the minutes are, are probably a little bit elevated for Hawthorne, although the Celtics do need to get their asses into gear if they want to get themselves home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs. Number 13 is Chris Paul, 25 and a half and 11 and a half. Uh, he is just looking like the Chris Paul of old, the guy that wasn't bothered by hamstring injuries, and it makes you think that the elbow and the hammy at the start of the year were really the reasons for his struggles. This is who he is, or how, who he has been for many, many seasons, especially last year alongside James Harden, and it's not unrealistic to think that he can just remain a second-round player for the rest of the season. Another guy here, a bit of a surprise, number 14, Zach Levine, who's been unbelievable for the Bulls. 27 points with six assists and five rebounds. The defensive numbers are always going to lack, and so much of his value is going to depend on what he's shooting, but he's shooting 51% at the moment and hasn't missed a free throw. He can be this guy. He has been much better than I anticipated. The uh, assist numbers up, the efficiency up, which was a dreadful last season. He's really taken that to an extra level. Uh, this is probably on the high side for Levine, but it's not 
an outrageous stat line to look at and go, well, maybe he could continue this um, yeah, this season or next season. He's been really, really good. Paul Millsap, uh, unbelievable lately, 18 and 13 with two and a half steals and 1.5 blocks. There's a lot of regression coming here for Millsap. The field goal percentage, the block rate, the steal rate, the rebound rate, things which he hasn't been able to do in four or five years. He's doing it here on a short sample size. Um, it's not going to be able to continue. He still is a must roster guy pretty clearly, but if anyone wants to buy him as a top 40 guy, I would absolutely sell under that circumstance. Number 16 is Kyle Lowry. Some of these games without Ka- Kawhi Leonard has helped. 16, 4, and 9 with 2.3 steals. Again, nothing unrealistic about that stat line from Lowry at all. Well, Drew Holiday, only 30 minutes a game over the last four. That looks like it might come down a bit. 22, 4, and a half, and 6 with 2.3 steals and 1.3 blocks. He's hanging on to top 20 value. I venture a guess that when I do this next week, he may not remain in that top 20, which is a bit of a pain in the ass for anybody who has him on their team. Number 18, Nikola Vucevic of the Orlando Magic. Only 28 minutes a game because the Magic have been blowing people out, but Vuce is averaging 21 and 13. He's averaging a triple one. He's getting almost five assists, and he's shooting 56 from the field. He's also shooting a troubling 58% from the free throw line, and if that was higher, then we'd see him at number 13 or 14 around that mark, but he has been unbelievable this season, a consistent top 20 guy. The next two players are probably surprising to see to round out the top 20 Number 19, Lou Williams, averaging 29 points per game and six assists on 52% shooting. Two things stand out there. 52% shooting won't stick. Six assists per game will probably fall off as well. But Lou has really stepped it up in the absence of Tobias Harris, while number 20 is Tomas Satoransky. Only two games he missed because of uh, the birth of his child, but he's averaging 13.5 points, easily the lowest amount of points of anybody in this top 20. But why is he so high? Well, he's shooting 69%. Giggity! He's averaging three and a half steals uh, with three and a half assists and hasn't missed a free throw. Granted, he's only taken one of them, but uh, he has uh, been producing in those categories. Now, those steal numbers are clearly going to drop and that's going to cause him to tumble. But he is available in 39% of Yahoo leagues and he should be available in probably 0% of Yahoo leagues. There's no reason for Thomas Satoransky to be on the wire. He is your 20th ranked player over the last two weeks. The last or the first four out, 21, Larry Markinen, 22, Nikola Jokic, 23, The Undertaker, Dwayne Dedman, and 24, Pascal Siakam. That'll wrap it up for another Locked On Fantasy Basketball Fast Break Edition podcast after this show is over. Why don't you tell your smart device in your car to play your favorite team's Locked On Podcast Network show. Hey, t- uh, hey Siri or Alexa or whatever other smart device you've got. Tell your, uh, while you sit in traffic, while your brain is being turned to mush waiting for cars to move, get your car to play your favorite Locked On Podcast Network show. Follow me on Twitter at RedRock underscore B-Ball and go to the network at Locked On NBA Net on Twitter and on Instagram. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.